Shinnig and Tandle Day. We're out on this place here. We're um, not far out from where I live and I'm doing a review today on my third bike, the Honda GB350. This is a 2024 model. I've done about 1200 kilometres since I've purchased the bike and overall so far it's been a pretty good bike. So if you look at something about a Honda GB350 and I'll get in here out of the wind a bit because and you'll see a bit of nice background up there too which I plan on sending the drone up we'll get a bit look at that so if you stay tuned and watch the end of the clip you'll see the closer looks of those rocks up there when I fry the drone over it plus we'll do a ride on the bike and you're going to hear what a fantastic exhaust this has got now this is as far as I can really go unless I walk up that track there because as you can see here We've got the private property keep out by a security area and we've got cameras there and no trespassing so you are really stuffed when it comes to going any further unless you can't read and uh, you may get out of that one or you may not so what i can tell you about this gv350 in case you're wondering uh, i'm doing a five bike test i own five new bikes from 22 up to 24 and so far i've done the 23 vespa 300 gts super sports I've done the classic 350 Reborn, it's also a uh, 23, this one here naturally is a 24 model and in the description I'll link the other two for you to come and uh, you know if you want to go and have a check them out and see what you think about the reviews on those. So I always like to give a straight review on anything I've got and I'll give you the good and bad points about it, we won't fool around there. So let's get on to it. The, uh, Honda GB350 comes in exactly the same price as the Enfield Classic 350 so it's $8,000 neat in standard form so with that particular format you get a 15 litre fuel tank which is about one and a half litres more than the Classic so I suppose it, in theory if you get 30 kilometres to the litre if you're giving it a bit of a workout you'd probably clock 500 kilometres to it So overall you should be pretty happy with the 500k tank. Now wheel size, it and the Classic once again share the same. 19 inch front, 18 inch rear. So they've both got the same in that line too. They've virtually, like I said, got almost the same price, $8,000 each right away. Uh, both have got ABS and with this particular bike you've got something a little bit different to the Classic. You also come stock with traction control. So, uh, you know, like you might like that idea and uh, in weight wise this one comes in roughly at 180 kilos and the classic comes in at 195 now if you keep wondering why I'm cross referencing the classic this is the bike the classic goes against uh, that's why Honda brought it out I'd say to actually compete with the classic 350 because they knew Enfield were getting a lot of sales in that line and they thought they might come in have a slice of the pie itself so that's my thoughts there and I'd say it'd be pretty well close to what I think be yeah, so another point uh, I might as well put out when we're doing comparisons between the Classic 350 and this one, naturally the Classic 350 on the base model, $8,000, this is the one it competes against, it's got uh, spoke wheels with tube tyres, and naturally this one here has got uh, the alloy style wheel with tubeless tyres. So, you know, if you like the idea of more so tubeless, that's a good way to go. But overall, this is a really nice little bike to ride as far as it, it runs along well, very very little vibration in this bike at all it's surprised you at 100 kilometers now it's so smooth and uh, nice and crisp to look out the uh, mirrors there instruments a little bit on the basic side but you know you've got the main thing you want there you've got the speedo and uh, you've got an economy light there a few people don't like the economy light but you know I, I don't drive the bike or ride the bike that hard anyway so that part doesn't worry me a great deal the uh, suspension uh, rear shocks are a little bit on the hard side so that'd be one thing to do brake wise you know I have no trouble issue with the brakes the brakes are pretty good so uh, overall you know I think the only thing it might be a one-off on my bike or someone else might chime in and say yeah they've started too but you have got a bit of a problem there straight off from a cold start where it gets that bit of a revs up a little bit for the first couple of minutes or say first yeah a couple of stops and then after that it calms down and any time you started after that rest of the day I think the uh, motor's warmed up a little bit and the ECU's in a different setting and you don't have any trouble with that trying to uh, you know use the uh, like it was on cruise control so uh, now if you're wondering what would be the 
worst thing you could find if, once you get on this bike and riding it around. So uh, we'll, from a, an outright cold start, so if I parked the bike that night and come out the first time in the morning and got on it, and you give it a minute or two to warm up and then you head off, the first thing you strike is when you get to your first corner, for some reason it's still revving a little bit high and wants to keep carrying on. It's almost like uh, the old days when you had an automatic car put it in drive and it would just carry on without you riding it. So that would be the biggest drawback I could find on this now because I wasn't happy with the seat and uh, as far as that goes but I've fixed up the seat now so that's alright. You'll also notice I put in a little um, rail here you know if I want to run saddlebag. See this one here? So I haven't really tested that yet but that's something I'll be going to. The other extras I put on it was just a heel and toe shifter, but that came off a classic 350 Reborn. It's not perfect, but I still think it's better than the uh, really chatty look on one that come with this bike of stock. Uh, the best thing about two I mentioned earlier, it's got traction control, and if you want to, you can turn that traction control on and off on the fly. So you can go along and just press the button, and the bike is a little even a little bit quicker with traction control. Uh, off I should say so uh, if you click that off it's a little bit quicker but you know it's a good safety feature so you might as well use it looks like with the wind around here at the moment I've got no choice but uh, and I'm not referring to me I'm referring to what's blowing around here it's fairly gusty out there I'll just have to hope this uh, reception comes out all right on this uh, camera and uh, so, so that we go from there so uh, overall if you're in the market to buy one of these what I would say overall that um, this is most likely a better bike than the classic 350 as much as I have to say it it's um, overall a pretty good bike it will run long no trouble at all at 100 kilometers now and this has got a couple of mods on it and one especially which helps it run along a bit better but uh, you know seeing I own both bikes I've just given you a straight answer there and if you actually ask me which one I'd prefer like if I had the choice of one I'd just take the classic 350 reborn because it is really a better looking bike uh, it may be different if they had better colors here in Australia but you only got a choice of a matte black or a matte blue and when it comes to those things you know like Honda could have got their act together and did a little bit better there and brought in a, uh, a gloss color which I would have jumped at but never worked like that and you just got two colors I think which are pretty boring in the beginning I didn't go much on this black motor because I would have preferred a shiny one, you know, like normal alloy one without paint on it because, you know, even when I had the Royal Enfields, which I've had a few of those, I still didn't like their painted motors compared to the straight one. But, you know, probably they do it, for, this is a different sort of a paint system on this one compared to what's on the Enfield because this is a fairly gloss shinier one where the other ones on the Enfields are more like a matte finish. But overall the fit and finish on this bike is pretty good for what it is. I still think whether you're talking uh, a classic 350 or one of these GB 350s and they come in at $8,000, uh, they're still $1,500 to uh, over what they should be. I reckon they should be in Australian dollars, around six and a half. But, uh, and taking into account these GB 350s are really the Japanese version of the Indian Highness. So the Indian Highness has been out three or four years so they know what's good about them and what isn't with these ones here. Uh, you, you know they just changed, I, I think they did a couple of minor colour things. See this feet of a rail here, I think in the Highness that's a different colour and there's a couple of other minor things there too which nothing in it sort of serious like as far as they got in to change this. Uh, I, I think they, they had this idea they what I was thinking to bring them in and make them or assemble them whatever the case will be in Japan so they can whip the price up a bit big, more compared to what they charge if it was Indian one version coming in as a highness so that's only my thought but you know in this day and age everyone's out to try to get a quick buck and the manufacturers of bikes really like to get as big a buck as they can I mean for a perfect example the highly overpriced Honda CT125 Trail $8,000 when it was here, right away no more to pay, 7800 and a highly overpriced bike for 10 horsepower. So uh, people, you know, at times they get the shits when I tell them about that when I think they overpriced, and taking into account I own two of them. So I bought them, and the people who buy them are more nostalgia people from the 70s and stuff like that, and they sort of want to go for the trip back in time. And on that trip back in time, Honda decided then that um, they would uh, 
uh, give you a trip back in time bike but not the price so they give you an $8,000 bike where it's in the earlier stages when I had the first ones to come in I was talking to a bloke over there in Thailand via YouTube and I think he said he paid 3000 US dollars for his which even in Australian money would have only been around about five so uh, you know like it's just that when they went elsewhere they decided oh well if these outsiders want to pay for it I'll make them pay a good price well that's what they thought of anyway so uh, overall that's about uh, we can get off that Honda's trail there one now like I said they're a good little bike but then if you got one of those and you want them to get them to perform put a 13 tooth sprocket on it and while we're talking about 13 tooth sprocket one of the guys here who um, follow me on this uh, channel he's got one of these GB 350s he told me to put a 13 tooth sprocket on this one I put one on it and the bike performs a lot better with that sprocket on it those bikes knock out 20 horsepower but I think torque wise this uh, GB350 has definitely got much more in that line and it's really quick in the first three gears once you get in the fourth it's sort of starting to slow down and in fifth gear that's almost like an outright overdrive but it's also got a slipper clutch too so uh, you know if you are got a bit of arthritis anything like that if you're an older rider and you want an easier ride it's one of the lightest clutches around so uh, you know uh, the only thing I really found wrong with it when I had it, or when I've still got it I mean, is the uh, factory seat for me was a little bit hard, but other people have told me they have no trouble with the factory seat. But meanwhile, I pulled the cover off that one, repadded it underneath, and you know, I reckon it turned out pretty good, and overall it came out fairly well and the seat's a lot more comfortable to work on now. So uh, when I say work, I class this as work when you go out riding around because uh, going out and doing clips all the time is more like work compared to if you were just going out for an enjoyable ride So one good thing about this GV350 is they got a fantastic exhaust And if you look at the end of the clip when I'm running along through the corners You'll hear it belting away and I think one of the for a stock exhaust one of the best stocks around There's no risk about that for what it is a 350 single You don't have to go out and waste four or five hundred dollars on a sports exhaust because you've got the notes there to start with so you don't have to worry about that at all so um, service wise on these as far as I know was first service 1000 kilometres next one at 12,000 after that 24,000 kilometres so it's a long time or long drink between services but I'd say if you're doing it yourself a smart idea would be uh, in my case anyway I'm I did the first service myself at a thousand and then I'll probably do one at three six nine twelves I'll, I'll go in that direction there I wouldn't like to run this 12,000 kilometres without an oil and filter change you know I think uh, that would be pushing your luck a bit 